I'm doing a video showing off my current uh, collection. Uh, it's December 15th or something like that, 2022. Making this video just to show off my collection and hopefully encourage other people to start because it's a really fulfilling hobby. As well as future reference, just in case anything goes missing or I need a specific frame of reference. Starting off, this is my main retro shelf. A lot of my older stuff is over here. NES, Super Nintendo, N64, 2600. N64 stuff is right down there at the bottom, along with a stack of Famicom game, or Super Famicom games. Don't have many, don't play them too often, but I still got them. On the top, you can see I have three rows of NES, as well as a random dinkly little thing down there. I need to organize these better, but at the moment, I do not have the space for it. I'm literally thinking about getting a storage unit just to put some of the stuff in, but I don't want to pay $150 a fucking month just to do that. I don't have anything super, super hard to find on NES, but I do have a couple. Uh, let's see if I could find it real quick. Over here I have, I think it's one of these. It's Indiana Jones. No, this is a good one too. Uh, the Tengen Tetris. That's a, um, a harder to find NES game. It's a little bit on the pricier side. And that was one of the first really expensive games that I ever bought in my collection. Then I also have Indiana Jones is somewhere over here. Why are you flipped around? You shouldn't do that. Uh, where are you? Well, anyways, I promise you it's over here. It's somewhere. Like I said, this bottom shelf... The second to the bottom is mostly Super Nintendo. And then I also have some other stuff down here, but I don't I don't put any of the good stuff closer down. I just don't like leaning over from my center to try to get this. These uh these colored cartridges over here, these are uh third party repros. These are really cool games. They are very cool. Uh, Ancient Stone Tablets, a Super Metroid collection. It has like different ROM hacks and stuff of Metroid. And then this one is uh, Terra Enigma. This game was not released in the States. And I think it was only PAL regions. So like Europe and Jap Japan and stuff like that. I have some other stuff over here. Nothing crazy, but some harder to find stuff. Contra 3, Castlevania 4, one of my favorite games of all time. Like I said, I also got some 2600 down here. As long as a bachelor party on the 2600. I picked this up at a Retro Palooza in Arlington, Texas, literally just this year. Very happy with that. But like I said, don't got much space for it, so it just kind of sits there. And since I don't play 2600 enough, I'm not too worried about having to move it every single time I want to play something. Uh, at the top here, is at the top is usually where I put all my good stuff. The stuff that I'm really proud of, the stuff that I obviously I want to show off. Over here, I have a boxed in television with a voice synthesis module with it. I got this from a flea market. My dad actually bought that for me, if you can believe it. I paid like 150 for both of them. At the time, I wasn't too into collecting, but over the years, I it's ballooned into something crazy. So now that's one of my more prized possessions because it's one of the first things I got when I started. Over here, this is a complete Animal Crossing Amiibo collection. Don't ask me why it's here. I'll show my other Amiibos here in a second, but... Uh, that's an Animal Crossing clock made out of a record. My friend got that for me for my birthday or Christmas or something. So now it just kind of sits there. Here is the really good stuff. These are the more expensive Super Nintendo titles that I have. I'm very happy with these and how they are. Um, Chrono Trigger, Castlevania Dracula X, Rondo of Blood, or Dracula X, whichever you prefer. This one was the first, like, triple-digit game that I ever bought when it came to retro collecting. It was a big plunge, and it took a lot of convincing, but I'm glad that I did, because otherwise I wouldn't have all this other stuff. And I got Sunset Riders and Earthbound right there. They, these are all official, as far as I know. No repros. But I also have, behind that, a uh, boxed Super Castlevania 4. It's very, very minty. Very nice. I actually had to Frankenstein this together. 
I bought this at a game store for 200 or something, but it did not come with a manual, so I had to go on eBay and find that, and it was actually in decent shape. Uh, Secret of Evermore and Final Fight. I haven't really played these two a lot. I played enough of Final Fight, but Secret of Evermore is just an RPG. I don't know much about it. That is a um, Song of Storms music box that my best friend, the same friend who bought me that clock, got me. Uh, this is the uh, PS, PS1 Classic. Nothing crazy. I just don't have any other, spa other place to put it, so it just kind of sits there. That is a VHS tape. I have no idea where this is from. It's some kind of thing. I think it was Nintendo Power. I have no idea. I got a DK figure up there. He just kind of chills there. Watches over me while I sleep. This, I'm not entirely sure where this is from. Uh, it is a triple disc music CD set. It has Mario 64, Star Fox, and Mario Kart 64. All the music from those three games. It's really nice. It's really minty. I think I still remember where I got it. Uh, it was like a Goodwill or something. My dad, he bought that for me. Like when I was very young, and I've kept it ever since. I can't find any information about this. As far as I know, I don't know anything. The closest to an answer I ever got was uh, the same game store that I went to get the Castlevania. They said that one of the guys told me that it might be something that they gave out from Nintendo Power. So I'm not entirely 100%, but that's my only real explanation so far. Below this, I have some boxed N64 titles. These are pretty good. The Mario 64 is a little bit crusty around the edges. You can see that it's not in the best shape, but I, I'm still proud of it. Obviously, I have this very, very minty ocarina. I paid 300 or something for this. At the time, money didn't really matter because so, it was such an amazing in condition, so I just went ahead and bit the bullet and got it. This perfect dark that I have, I've had this since I was like 12 I got this from a game store for like 20 bucks, and it was my only like boxed title for the longest, longest time. And behind that, I have a purple controller, the Atomic Purple uh, N64. I uh, found this at a game store for 150 That game store is really cool. I really enjoy going there. Not going to tell you where it is because I don't want to dox myself, but there it is. And then behind that, obviously, I'm sure you saw it, I have a boxed Super Nintendo. It's the original one. I think it's the like the original release, but it's really nice. I need to get plastic protectors for both of these so that they stopped collecting dust because I like it's very dusty. But it's something to keep your mind off of things, I guess. Over here, it's VHS mostly. I have a lot of horror movies and Star Trek stuff, that's like one of my main focuses. Star Trek and horror stuff is what I mostly collect when it comes to VHS. But I don't really have any other spot space for them, so they just kind of sit here on the end here. Above that, this is my Super Mario Brothers that I got uh, the all of the game chasers, uh, chasers to sign. So Billy, Jay, Dodongo, and Melvor at uh, Retropalooza this year. I got all of them to sign that for me. One of the highlights of my life, if you ask me. Uh, above that, a couple of Doctor Who and Metroid, just like posters and stuff. They're really nice, really cool looking stuff. I got semi, uh, stained glass uh, Wind Waker, or is that Wind Waker? I don't know, it's a Zelda poster. It's really cool looking. It took me a while to find a frame that fit it properly, but I found one at a Walmart, so it worked out in the end. And then I also have a uh, Majora's Mask poster. It's very nice. That's probably my personal favorite poster that I have. And then over here, I also uh, collect Transformers as well. Uh, a lot of the stuff on the top is the stuff that I'll take down often and actually play with sometimes. I have a mix of everything. You got some Bayverse stuff, you got some classics, and some animated in there, Beast Machines. You can see the, uh, the Year of the Horse Optimus Primal that's sitting back there. It's very interesting. And then below that, I have a uh, bumblebee and like little tykes. I don't know what the fuck to call them. The kitty toys. The more kitty toys. The really simple, like five steps and you're done. Instant gratification, rush of dopamine that children get. Most of these, 
came most of these on this shelf came from hitting up uh, Goodwills near near my house, which is actually how I am amassed a bunch of my games. Mostly that helped my PS2 side grow because you didn't you don't find N64 and NES stuff around my area too often. Occasionally I find a GameCube game and I'll I'll get into that when I get to that other section. Here is G1 stuff. Everything here is original except um, the blaster, the Rodimus, and the Starscream. Where's Starscream? Oh, he's back there behind Rodimus. Okay. Those are all uh, reissues. The blaster and Starscream, I know for a fact, are because I bought those in uh, like 21. But the Rodimus, I think, is one of the 2000s reissues. I'm not entirely 100%. I found a 2004 like copyright date on it, but I'm not 100%. Below that is uh, my main, my favorite shelf, Beast Wars. Growing up in the 2000s, Beast Wars was like the shit for me, so I loved this stuff. The, uh, the OG Optimus Primal and Megatron, those are the Walmart reissues, as well as the, um, the Tigertron and those other two boxes that I got back there. Below that is just random assortments of other stuff that I don't have room for, pretty much. So they just kind of sit there. I try to keep them nice and organized, but it doesn't work out half the time. Over here, this is collectible slash amiibo stuff. I got a mix of everything over here. I got a, like Dragon Ball, I got JoJo, I got um, Ghostbusters. I even have some California Raisins there. I got some Gremlin, and I got a Godzilla figure right there. And below that is all of my amiibo. This is pretty much all of them, aside from the um, the Animal Crossing ones that I had over there. For me, Amiibo is a fickle thing. I always they came ar out around the time that I started getting out of collecting, because I used to like really enjoy the 3DS when I was younger, and it's still probably my favorite console of all time. But at the tail end of my collecting journey on that console, when I was like 13, Amiibo started popping out. So I missed out on getting a bunch of these, and I didn't realize how expensive they would actually be, but they turned out okay. A lot of the stuff up top is the original Smash Bros. set. I don't have any... I, don't, I haven't completed them entirely, because there's like 50,000 of them, but I'm getting there slowly but surely. Below that is like just a hodgepodge of everything else. I got some Zelda stuff. I got the Skyloft. And uh, Amiibo and the uh, the Mifa Amiibo. Behind that, I got the Metroid Dread Amiibos that came out. Uh, Link's Awakening, Cat Mario, and another Skyloft Amiibo. Right below that, or Left Wing. That's what they're called, not Skyloft. That's the city. Uh, I got some other stuff, Monster Hunter Stories. And then I got a Fire Emblem one right there in the left-hand corner. That's the most expensive Amiibo I ever bought. Like $80. Not the best purchased because I never noticed it at the time, but that's pretty much it there. And then below that is just other boxes. It's double stacked back there. I got some other stuff. Nothing crazy. Above that, or beside it rather, is some Gundam stuff. I went through this phase where I really enjoyed building Gundam. It's one of my favorite things to do for like three months. I only built three figures, but I took really good care of them and tried to clean them up and shave off all the nub marks as, I, as best I could. So, I have a Gundam Wing and the RX-78-2 and a Death Scythe, I think is the name. These are pretty cool. Gundam Wing was actually the first, like, mecha anime that I ever saw. Obviously, there was Transformers before that, but I don't think you would classify that as an anime, so... I don't really consider it. Below that, it is a that is a G1 styled Optimus Prime. It's a Transform Element OP Leader. It's actually a really good um, alternative to having a real MP because if you don't want to spend four hundred fucking dollars for the actual figure, then one hundred and sixty for this guy is very it's a very good deal. Below that. This is probably my favorite figure out of the bunch, but I don't mess with him much. It's an original uh, Masterpiece Beast Wars Optimus Primal. Very, very nice. 
I also got this one in Texas. I didn't get anybody to sign it, unfortunately, but I don't think anybody there would have cared to. Below that, boxed NES games and Super Nintendo stuff. I got Star Tropics, Monster Party. There's a couple of good ones in here, but not too much. I got a boxed Contra. It's very nice. Those are uh, Haunted games right there next to Flashback. Those are new NES games that got released very recently, within like the past decade or so. It's always reassuring to see people releasing new games for old systems. It makes me really happy. And then the rest of that stuff at the bottom is just random schlock that I just don't have space for. So they go right here with the rest of them. The shelf right next to it, this is the PS2 shelf and Xbox shelf. I got some really good titles over here, but the rest of this is mostly just filler. My, uh... My main goal when it comes to PS2 is to just to get all the main horror games. That's pretty much the only thing I care about. It's the, like, the genre of games that I like and play the most, probably. So, that's only pretty much the only thing I go for. Over here, uh, Silent Hill Origins 2, 3, 4, and Haunting Grounds are as far as I've gotten so far. I also have the, uh, the original Silent Hill. Uh, but I'm letting a friend borrow that at the moment, and he has yet to return it. So, above that, on the other shelves, I have a um, a Miles Morales statue. It's a very nice figure. It lights up and everything. This is from the uh, the PS5 game that came out. It's the uh, the 2020 suit version. It's very very cool. I wish that it had more posability for the price, but for this kind of design you can't really I mean it's whatever beside that this is a uh, Batman X Green Goblin figure that uh, got really not Green Goblin Green Lantern figure it was part of a, um, a comic book line that I did not get into or know anything about but it was a really cool looking thing and but then beside that I have a marker I got that off of Etsy. It's like my pride and joy. I literally just got that a few weeks ago. And aside, right below that, I have 360 stuff. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I don't play 360 enough. A lot of parallels are drawn with my collecting PS2 and uh, Xbox. It's mostly just horror. Dead Space is like my main focus when it comes to this stuff. I absolutely love that franchise. I'm super excited for the remake they're doing. I can't wait for that to come out. I already pre-ordered the uh, the three hundred dollars edition. I uh, it's not gonna, the thing is about that though, that uh, collector's edition that comes with the helmet. It's not actually going to be shipped until after the game's release, so I'll have to buy the game twice probably. I also have a uh, manhunt back there on the uh, on the top shelf back behind Dead Space Two, but I'm not moving it, so you'll have to just sit there and ponder. Over here. Me and my dad put this together. It's just uh, some wood uh, with some pegboard mounted on the wall. It's very nice. I made it look sort of like a store display. I got a, I got some nice stuff over here. Nothing crazy, though. I got a couple of boxed Transformers back there that I don't really think I need too much. Aliens and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That Texas Chainsaw Massacre figure, it's actually one of the... Um, it's a NECA figure. But it's made in the styling of the Atari 2600 game where he's completely green and has like a... No, it's a green chainsaw as well. I was about to say blue. Beside that, Joy-Cons and stuff. It's kind of iffy. I uh, I still love collecting for the Switch, but the, the, um, the boxes take up a lot of space, and I'll show that later. Above that is just other miscellaneous stuff. I got a gizmo right there, an E.T. Nightlight. The um, the Worlds Collide box set for Transformers. That this is a really cool one. Nemesis Primal and uh, the Black Arachnia in original Beast Wars colors. The uh, the original uh, Black Arachnia toy had a different color scheme from the um, from the show. So that was really cool that they came out and redid that. Bumblebee is just a replant, uh, repaint of the Earthrise Cliff Jumper, I believe. And then Fangry, I don't know anything about Fangry. 
Above that is some random Bakugan. I've had those since I was like six. That was like one of my early childhood like hobbies was playing that game. I'm still surprised to, to hear that that game still goes on somehow, but hey, it's a small world, I guess. Um, beside that, it's random Guitar Hero controllers. I do play Clone Hero on occasion, so it's good to have these around. I don't play it often enough, but most of these, I got these from going to Goodwills and stuff. I got a couple of decent ones in there. I got a Les Paul and I got an Explorer back there in the very back corner. But that Explorer actually does not work. It's corroded on the inside and I need to fix the wiring, but I don't have a soldering iron. Moving on to the other side. This is my game main gaming setup. It's right next to the retro shelves that I showed earlier. Oh, I forgot to mention, I got a power pad back there. I literally just picked that up like the other day. Here is my main gaming, retro gaming area. NES, Super Nintendo, N64, GameCube, Turbo Graphics, Wii, uh, Atari 7800, Genesis Model 2, a fat PS2, PS1, an Xbox that doesn't work, and a Sega Master System. All of these except the Xbox are hooked up and ready to go at a moment's notice whenever I want to play. That includes the, the Switch and the Wii U. I had to uh, daisy chain two Switch boards together to make this all work. I got an eight sp an eight way splitter here and a four way splitter here. I won't be able to add too much other stuff unless I actually move a lot of it, but that's just how things go. I also have a very large uh, digital collection on Switch and PS5. I'm not going to show any of that because I don't care to sit down and do any of it, but that's there. I have some alien stuff right here. They're really cool. Uh, NECA. They're, I don't know if they're NECA or not, but they're really nice. I really like them a lot. They came with an, um, an egg with a face hugger in it and a chest burster as well. It's really cool looking. I'm really happy with these. Then I also have a little Metroid just sitting on the on top of the TV. It's really cool. Coming up to the top, I have shelves above that with even more stuff. So I have a Retron 2 up there. That was my very first like retro gaming system. My uh, Back when I first showed interest in retro stuff, my dad bought that for me. It does not work anymore. Well, I don't think it does. I think the SNES port on it is busted. But I still keep it just for nostalgia's sake. I got a laser scope, which I found at a Goodwill. That's probably my second best Goodwill ever, like, score that I found. I got a couple of arcade machines, and then I also have a, um, a ColecoVision above that. Is that... No, that's in television. What am I thinking? I have a uh, uh, Star Raiders in the box up there. Never played it. Don't really care to. I have an original Model 1 Genesis, as well as, like, just a random Genesis aftermarket controller. You can't really see it that well, but over there I also have an NES and SNES Mini. They just kind of sit there. I don't have anything else to do with them. Keeping with the theme of the top shelf, above all of that other stuff, above my normal Transformers, I also have this shelf. This is mostly legacy stuff. I almost have the complete Legacy Collection, but not all of them. I'm missing like four or five of them. Uh, the Autobot Arc is one that I'm missing. I hope to get that at some point. And then I'm also missing a couple of the Fossilizer repaints. Specifically uh, this guy, the Triceratops guy right there. I don't not remember his name, but that's one thing that I need to do at some point is finish all that stuff up. Coming around, this is probably the more modern part of the the room. I got some mostly Switch stuff, and like at the top, I have a uh, a light up NES sign that my mom made for me for my 18th birthday. I really like that, but it drains the power on like the three triple A's that it requires in like two hours, so I don't cut it on too often. That uh, monstrosity right there, that is Metroid Fred. My, I hesitate to call him best friend. 
because he gave me that shit. He gave that to me for, uh, again, for birthday or Christmas or something. I don't remember. I got some other stuff, like boxes, OLED, Metroid Dread Special Edition, a Mario figure, a couple of uh, really, really nice, um, like, 8-bit themed standees. These are really cool. They're not paper or cardboard. They're actual plastic. They look really nice and are very well detailed. I literally, that, um, that Mifa figure right there, I literally just picked that up today from Best Buy. I'm very happy with it. I actually reorganized this whole area over here just to make it fit properly. Yes, I have more switches than any one person should have, but I have more games than one person should have, so I'm not one to talk. Don't ask me why the rabbit is there. I found him at a Goodwill. I felt bad for him. I got him. I got Switch stuff mostly on the top shelf here. The top shelf, the very top, is mostly dedicated to uh, normal boxes. I do have one or two, like, more high-ticket items, but I don't really play them too often. The biggest ticket item I have right here is probably my super rare version of Mundan. This is a very good title. If you can pick it up, you should. Probably digitally, unless you want to pay, like... Well, that's what happens when you mess with your shelves. Okay, below that, mostly just like collectibles and stuff. I have my Switch Lite. I do play this occasionally. As you saw from the complete Animal Crossing Amiibo collection, I am a fan of Animal Crossing. So I actually have two islands, one for my main island on my OLED and another one on my Lite. I haven't actually touched that island too much, but I'm hoping to make it like a sister island at some point. I got a couple of special editions here, the Prinny Collections 1 and 2, Super Monkey Ball and Shantae Half Genie Hero, those are pretty cool. Then right here I got other stuff, another Prinny Collection, Hyperlight Drifter, um, Deadly Premonition, that's a very good franchise, it's very funny, if you can get a hold of it you should. Below that, that any mostly just DS stuff, like I said earlier. DS is one of my childhood consoles, so I'm very, very nostalgic towards this system. I don't have nearly enough as I would like, but I'm slowly getting there. It's on the top of my list when it comes to collecting right now, pretty much, aside from more Switch stuff. But I got a couple of special editions. I got uh, Stella Glow. It's an RPG thing. I haven't played a ton of it. And then a... Let me grab it real quick. Metroid Samus Returns Special Edition for the uh, 3DS. This is one of my main gets when I first got into uh, 3DS stuff. I've always wanted this when I first, since I first saw it a long time ago, but I finally found a copy for pretty cheap. Below that, uh, Bravely Default 1 and 2, along with the box for my actual 3DS right there sitting next to it. That's another uh, bigger ticket item right there. Corpse Party on the 3DS. Very cool horror-themed RPG. It's uh, made an RPG maker, I believe, but it's actually really well made. I haven't played nearly as much of this as I would like, but that's just how things go. Okay. Right next to it, you can't really see because it it's so fucking dark, but more collectibles. I have an OG, like, really ugly first model DS right next to it. You can't, you can't see it. Because it's so fucking dark, but there we go. Okay, fix the lighting. That is the stand that came with the Kid Icarus Uprising on the 3DS. It came with um it, that uh, that collector's edition. It came with a stand and some other stuff. I completely forgot to show off my normal 3D or DS stuff. I got some nice stuff: Final Fantasy III, Castlevania, Aliens Infestation. Fossil Fighters, I'm a huge, huge fan of Fossil Fighters. That's one series they absolutely need to bring back, but I haven't seen anything of it. Ghost Trick is pr probably my one of the more expensive titles. The most expensive was definitely the Aliens, but like I said, that's just how it goes. Over here, it's mostly just a bunch of other random stuff that's not too interesting. You know, your random shovelware stuff. Below that more collectibles and then below that is ps4 and ps5 
I got a couple of nice stuff, a couple of nice little ticket items, but nothing super crazy. It's not hard to find any of this stuff, really. So, below that, Wii and Wii U, as well as GameCube on the very bottom shelf. The very, very bottom. Not a whole lot to talk about here, obviously. I was, uh, I was born in 2001, so... I grew up with the Wii. It was like the first console that I ever played almost. My very first actually was the uh, GBA SP, but they get taken up at one day and I never got it back. So screw church because of that. I have crippling depression. Like I said, not a whole lot. I got the, um, a Kirby collection down there. I recent I got that a few months ago. It's really nice. I haven't played it yet, but I don't really need to. I got all the games anyways. Then below that, more Wii stuff. And this is GameCube. GameCube is super fucking hot right now. I understand why, but it makes collecting a lot more difficult than it needs to be. I got most of the staples. Oh yeah, right, I forgot. Uh, Silent Hill Shattered Memories right there on the Wii. There is a PS2 version of that game as well, but I don't have that yet, so there's that. Uh... That actually uh, brings into uh, this this set of three games right here. These are all the Zelda titles that were released on uh, GameCube. They're not all of them, but they're really nice. Zoom out a little bit so you can see them better. There we go. Come on, light up. They're nothing crazy. Twilight Princess, Wind Waker, and the uh, Zelda promotional disc. I was actually really lucky to find all of these. This is that uh, other uh, Goodwill haul that I was talking about earlier. I found all of these really cheaply at a Goodwill. I paid like three or four dollars a piece because Twilight Princess itself goes for hundreds. So I was soup. I was in shock when I found this. I uh, I think there was also. Where are you? Yes, it came with uh, Smash Brothers. It had a copy of melee as well so it was only three games it was smash twilight princess and the zelda promotional disc i got all three of those for super cheap that day i was very happy with it but that's pretty much it i literally just bought these shelves too i the main reason I got these was, one, more space, and two, because that trip to Retropalooza that I kept mentioning, like, five times before, I literally did not have enough space to put everything that I brought back, so I had to buy all of these. Over here, Arcade 1-Up, just sitting here. I don't play this too often, but it's a really, really nice, like, piece to have in the game room. Or room in general, because this is my fucking room in my house, so. <sighs> Above that, I got some plushies. A couple of nice ones. This, um, Seven figure, I think. I think that's her name. It's the Little Nightmares. I didn't even know this existed. I think it might be a custom job, but this is another thing I got at Retropalooza. <sighs> Back here is basically where I put everything else. Everything else. That is another boxed Beast Wars Optimus Primal Masterpiece. I haven't opened it. It's a gift for someone. Don't tell them. Uh, above that, you can't see it well back there, but that's just like where I keep all my cartridges and stuff for portable systems. In these, um, these little things right here, mostly this uh, white one is pretty much exclusively for uh, controllers. I don't put anything else in this one, it's just controllers. And this one right here is exclusively for accessories and stuff. Over here, this is my main desk. This is where I do any work that I need to do, or just anything else. Obviously, I've got a PS5. Really nice system, love it to death. I've got a couple of controllers, four of them. I want more, I'm only missing two or three of them to have the full set. The camo controller, the violet purplish one, and the hot pink one. But the hot pink looks basically like the red, so I'm not sure I'd need it. And that's like, 
that'd be like $250 just for three controllers, and I'm not fixing to do that, because I could buy a third Switch with that. Actually, it's more than three. When it comes to Switches, I have the Animal Crossing Switch, the Pokemon uh, Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Switch Lite. I have a blue Switch, that other one that I showed earlier, and then in the box, you can't really see it too well, but right there, it's a blue Switch Lite. And then the black one is like right below the uh, the Pokemon one right there. So that's one, two, three, four switches. And then I have a my OLED, obviously. And then before this, I actually had another switch, but I no longer have that. Long story, don't want to get into it. But five switches. Really into the switch right now. Over here on this side, it's um, I got my MacBook Pro sitting on there with the Batman Who Laughs wallpaper. I got the most pimped out MacBook this side of the Mississippi. So of course I have a Razer keyboard hooked up to it just because I don't like typing on membrane keys. I have a um, Oculus Quest or MetaQuest 2 or whatever the hell it's called. Really cool. I haven't played it a lot, but I need to since the version that I got came with RE4. They came with a free download code for that as well as Beat Saber. And then I got a, a 360 right below that. That's pretty much all I got in the grand scheme of things. I didn't show it off, but that is a Metroid Arm Blaster, the arm cannon. I really like that. A guy I had over couldn't put it down, so he kept trying to shoot me with it, so that was pretty comical. But that is pretty much it. Not a whole lot else to say, honestly. Like I said, this video will just serve as... I, I suppose people who want to see it, even though I'm a nobody, or future reference for in case something goes missing or something else. I don't know. But that is pretty much it. All right. I'll see you later.